We're out here today doing our annual refresher training for our line firefighters on swift water rescue operations. We have 140 firefighters online and only 24 of them are actually on our water rescue team. So it's quite a task to educate all of them so that they're prepared not only for the operational aspect, but for the safety aspect of working around water. We're teaching them first and foremost to take care of themselves because a rescuer that's not safe or becomes part of the problem actually minimizes our effectiveness on the rescue incident. So today we're teaching our firefighters how to protect themselves around water and if they inadvertently end up in the water, how to make sure that they can safely navigate or negotiate the water to make it out safely so that they can again become part of the rescue operation. So we're going over skills such as defensive swimming, uh, how to negotiate strainers which are objects that are in the water such as trees or branches that water flows through but rescuers don't and it can trap them under the water and drown them. We want to turn over to that aggressive swim except we want to head downstream now and we're going to do an aggressive freestyle stroke grab the strainer with two hands and push ourselves up and over it. Once we've cleared the obstacle, we return to the defensive swim position, head upstream, we pick our best spot and we ferry out in that way. Typically in the spring season we get our runoff, uh, but the warm weather typically lends itself to the public coming out and wanting to be around the water and recreate and things like that. So we have a higher incidence of responses to the water during those times of year. So what we would recommend is what we would recommend any time during the year, that first and foremost, you wear your personal flotation device anytime you're near the water or you're gonna be on the water. Second is never go by yourself. Go with a friend, make sure that somebody's watching you. If you take young children, make sure that they're wearing their PFDs and of course that they're never beyond arm's reach of you. We encourage you to take swim lessons if you're gonna be around the water. And probably lastly is to make sure that if you're gonna be around the water, understand your skill level and make sure that you don't go beyond that. The Littleton Fire Rescue water team responds to approximately 20 incidents related to water every year. We're actually on the uphill climb of that this year. We've responded to a dozen already. Uh, so it's been a fairly active year for us, which isn't something we typically like to see. But again, that's why we're out here today to make sure that the rescuers are educated and they're ready to respond to the need of the public. For more information on Littleton Fire Rescue, tune in to uh, Littleton Channel 8 or look for us on the web at littletongov.org slash fire. For 40 years, the Littleton Museum has been preserving and showcasing Littleton's history, art, and culture. This summer, the Two Potters Revisited exhibit in the museum's Changing Gallery exemplifies all three aspects of the museum's mission, history, art, and culture. Littleton Museum director Tim Nims says the museum wanted to capture the essence of the community during its 40th anniversary this summer. 2010 is the 40th anniversary of the Littleton Museum and we thought this was a perfect opportunity to really profile a business that occupied an important uh, part of downtown Littleton for almost four decades. Two Potters occupied a really unique role, I think, in, in the development of downtown Littleton, particularly at that time when the concept of a historic downtown was starting to emerge in this part of the metro area. And they really, I think, to a large extent, reflected the growing Littleton culture and its emphasis on the arts and community. The original Two Potters, Macy Dorff and Larry Wright, opened a shop on Main Street in 1967. Frank Gray then owned the shop until 2005. Presenting such icons required some artistry by Bill Hastings, curator of exhibits, who designed the exhibit. What we're doing with this exhibit, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty much wide open. I mean, you can walk around each module itself and see all the pieces that will be exhibited. What, uh, when we were talking to the uh, artists themselves, they kind of wanted to show a little bit of the utilitarian aspect of some of their work. So, uh, we've created a little table setting uh, for some of the work that they're going to be bringing down. Also, the two potters will be bringing down the uh, cart that was out in front of their building for so many years where they had a lot of their work on. Telling the story of the artwork, the potters, and their significance to Littleton's history was a challenge the museum enjoyed. 
When you go out to visit uh, the exhibit, you're going to see a really a great storyline about the potters themselves. If you take time to read the text panels, you're going to learn an awful lot about their connection to the city of Littleton. You're going to learn an interesting story about these guys that were around for a long time who had a very sustainable business on the city of Littleton Main Street. The museum works with the city's appointed Fine Arts Committee on four shows each year featuring painting, sculpture, and photography. The dedication and commitment of the Fine Arts Committee is, I think, a reflection on the importance that Littleton has always attached to the arts and artistic creativity. Littleton has always occupied an important part in the artistic community of uh, Colorado and the Front Range, and I think that uh, the role that the Littleton Fine Arts Committee has played, working with the community members and city officials, is a reflection of that importance, and I think that their commitment to art has really made sure that we've got public spaces that are both beautiful and stimulating. Two Potters Revisited will be on display from July 1st until August 22nd. Then, the Fine Arts Committee hangs 2010's edition of the perennial favorite Own an Original Best of Show exhibit, which opens September 16th. Bring your checkbook, because the art is for sale. Experience Littleton's history, art, and culture for yourself this summer at the Littleton Museum. It's right across from Bemis Library. The museum is open Tuesday through Sunday. Call 303-795-3950 for more information.